I'm Jaime Melis. I'm, I'm a level developer. I've been a developer for three years now. And I'm going to do a presentation on hacking of the Nebula. That means I'm going to, I'm not going to uh, talk about um, uh, like the whole set of features that Vanilla has and all those things, but it's going to be a bit of a technical talk on how to integrate the Nebula with your infrastructure. Now, um, since the integration is going to be uh, mostly shell scripting, all those things, you didn't, you didn't really need to know Vanilla before understanding this stuff. And I think it's going to be uh, easy for everyone to understand it. So Benebula, just like a cloud stack, it's a, a cloud management solution. You can do it in private clouds. Um, um, you have a private cloud, we have a private cloud API, and uh, you can manage images, networking, you can work machine support. Now you can also expose public cloud uh, interfaces, such as EC2, or the, our native one, which is uh, OCCI, the Open Cloud Computing Interface. And we also have support for hybrid, hybrid cloud, that means that we can communicate with Amazon services and uh, do cloud bursting and hybrid hybrid cloud computing. Now, um, uh, uh, what do we expect? Open Cloud. What do we expect from a um, cloud management solution? That is, it manages, of course, virtual machines, but it does as well um, manage storage, so, uh, backend. Um, so you register your image; it goes into a data store, and then when you log the cloud VM. It can move back and forth. We have support for many backends and those things. Now we also have support for different kinds of networking. We have the VLAN installation, open switch, we have firewalling, we have UV tables, so many things and all those things um, can be easily accessible. We, of course, we uh, expose uh, uh, many APIs. We have, uh, like uh, Sebastian said, a very powerful uh, command line interface because Open is a very unique tool. So even, for example, uh, res uh, permissions uh, on the resources are uh, done in the Unix way. You declare a uh, group owner, a user owner, and then permission not get. And uh, that's how it works for every single resource of another manifest. We expose, uh, we have a, a, a web interface. We have a public, uh, public cloud interface, as I said before. Uh, now, we also have a multi-tenancy. That means that um, we, tend to, we, we are very scalable in the sense that and we, we can deploy many of the Nebula clouds. There's a server, we, just, we call it also, and it's running on top of that. That will federate all those um, open Nebula instances that will give you virtual data centers so you can do whatever you want with that. You, can, you have the virtual data center admin, and just ask us to add to a certain part of that, um, uh, to, a, to a specific uh, set of Nebula resources. And we also support uh, um, grouping of clustering, uh, monitoring, and multiple hypervisors. Now, to understand why uh, the network is designed the way it is, uh, we, uh, I think it would be uh, important to explain a set of principles who we, um, uh, we follow every time we uh, create a feature and we try to turn the, current, the, the way it works nowadays. First of all, we try to be really flexible. That is, uh, we don't think there is one, uh, each uh, data center is different. So instead of uh, trying the data center to behave like we want it to behave to, what we give is uh, sysadmins and, and DevOps the uh, means and tools to adapt and then able to work with their infrastructure. So if you have an interactive infrastructure, you have a proprietary component nobody's integrated with, you, we just uh, we, we try to work with that easily and seamlessly. So components are easily hacked. If they're batched, yeah, and you can simply like, look at them, understand them like a couple of minutes, and then you go <coughs> right to the extension. Now, that's the message I want to get across in this talk, that it's really, really hackable and it's really reasonable. It's simple. We have, although we have uh, many features, we manage many virtual resources, that doesn't mean we have many components. Actually, everything runs <coughs> in, in, in one machine, except for hypervisors, which have their own, their own Different in the server. It's scalable as I said before, it's uh, interoperable, interoperable, and it's open. it's open source. This slide, I think, uh, uh, just, it, uh, shows uh, beautifully how OpenEvil works. This is OpenEvil uh, uh, deployment, the real deployment. It's just you have just one OpenEvil node, it has the OpenEvil daemon, the scheduler, and that's it. You don't need any agents in your, in your nodes. You don't need anything. Just as long as those agents have a hypervisor and have an SSH, <laughs> available to communicate with them. 
So to get getting started with Jabrila is really easy. Just install the Jabrila in the front end and, 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 and you're on. So this is the this is the Jabrila's architecture. In the center, you see the Jabrila core. That core is written in C plus plus. That core is responsible for orchestrating the life cycle of, of all the resources, such as images, uh, <coughs> templates, uh, virtual machines, all those things. On top of that, we have an XML RPC API client, all the clients, even a schedule that uses that XML RPC API. We have official bindings for uh, support by us by Ruby and Java. We have community contributions for Python, even for PHP. And um, even though, since it's, a, since it's an XML RPC API, it's very easy to abstract and to create a library for OpenEvola. From that, we have the command line interface, the GUI, which is, uh, we have two GUIs, we have the public cloud one, and the uh, and, um, and, uh, private cloud, which is Sunstone. And below OpenEvola, below, below the core, this is going to be my, my main topic today, which is the, which are the the components that you can extend and customize to your to your data center. So I'm going to move on to the virtual management drivers. Uh, well, no, sorry. The, the, there are three things about this right, this set of drivers. They're easy to adapt, and they're, and they're so easy to maintain because uh, you, you can understand them really easily. So if Vanilla uh, goes, if you have to upgrade from Nebula, you can simply like uh, port them. You'll see, you can see we have a migration document every time. You can see what uh, what has changed, and then you can simply uh, plug it into your new installation. Uh, we're, we're using all the, all the integration effort you, you have already done. So moving on to the so the, to, to the virtualization uh, drivers. These are uh, these are the drivers that are responsible for the virtual machine um, actions, such as deployment, canceling, shutting down, and stuff. Um, we have uh, support for four uh, hypervisors in the main distribution, KVM, Zen, and VMware. Each of them, uh, uh, they have the same features and they behave uh, similarly. And Amazon Web Services, which is for hybrid computing, it behaves a little bit differently because uh, the concept is different. But then again, the concept is the same. And we also have uh, many community contributions uh, that uh, some of them are maintained, some of them aren't. But, um, so you can use open the virtual box and all this thing. Now, uh, this is uh, the most, uh, I guess this is the most difficult uh, slide of the talk. It's uh, how does the deployment in OpenLA work? This is an example for, of the deployment flow for KVM. Um, on the left side, you can see the core, the blue box. The core will generate the deployment file. That's the black box to the, on the left. That's a, that's a typical libvir deployment file. You don't see anything strange in there. Uh, the core sends that deployment file over the standard input to a remote KVM deploy script that is uh, in the hosts. So when OpenEvola boosts from that host, it will uh, uh, send to that host the, uh, uh, some static scripts. And those will be called during uh, the OpenEvola life cycle, during certain specific actions. But you see down here is the entire deploy script. Well, there are a few like the same, but they're mainly source, uh, you know, like um, sourcing other files. But but as you can see, deploying, uh, extending this is really easy. Now, the first old line that says cat to domain, um, that's uh, writing down the uh, deploying file that it got from the front input to the domain file. The next time it's doing a verse, create a domain. So it's as simple as that. As long as you know what your hypervisor works, as long as it has an API, a uh, command um, line interface, um, you're good to go. It, it's as simple as that. So, so that's what it does. It's, it writes an deployment file and it uh, does burst create and it reports back to the to benevolent the status of that call. So it, it's uh, really easy to understand. This is the set of uh, different um, uh, actions we have. You have to implement to have a full uh, support for a, hyper, for a hypervisor. So yeah, like, they're pretty, pretty much self-explanatory. Shut down, uh, restore, uh, reboot, all those things. This first brings to the right is an example of a migration script. As you can see, this is the complete migration script. We just source a few lines and we do XM migrate. This is for XM hypervisor. It, it just couldn't be simpler. If you want to uh, tune a few lines there, it's 
it's really, really, really easy to do. So um, a while back, um, we created three uh, appliances, uh, such as the one that stack provides. So you can just uh, boot up an emulator to your uh, plugin, uh, download an appliance, and starting with Virtual uh, uh, Box, KVM, and Inware. We have those three. But again, what we did is that uh, we created an Amazon instance. So you can go into Amazon. You can start a, start a, a an Amazon instance which has already an emulator installed and running, mm -hmm. and it will and it will um, it will uh, virtualize within that uh, Amazon instance. Uh, TTY Linux is not by using KVM, but by using QE. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, you can do KVM instead of Amazon since it's, uh, uh, since you can kind of have virtualization inside of that. So, uh, what we have to do, we have to write support uh, for a new for a new hypervisor, which is QE. Now, that's not included in the physical distribution because nobody would want to use that having KVM since it doesn't have virtualization uh, extensions. But these are the steps uh, we have to follow to provide support for KVM. We clone the set of drivers for KVM to a folder named QVM. And now, the second, the second point is that in the deployment file that I showed at the slides earlier, we substituted KVM with QVM using a set, set, a set sentence, a set uh, command, and then we pipe that to the deploy. So, uh, the, the gray box on down on the left, um, as you can see up there, it says domain type equals KVM. So what we did is we, we, we wrote a, uh, a script that is uh, like, that's, uh, the QMU deploy script that in turn will call the deploy script that will uh, um, uh, change the standard input, capture it, and change it that type equals KVM, that type equals QMU. And then we call the KVM deploy script. Third thing we have to do, is uh, the post script, which is a, uh, really a simple script that is written in Ruby, because it collects uh, some information from, from the hypervisor. We have to change one line for it to detect QNU. So for pre that, that was the whole story for creating support for any hypervisor. Now, of course, uh, if you're going to create support for any hypervisor, it's going to be a little more difficult like this, because uh, QNU is really similar to KDM. We use this in deployment file with a few exceptions and those things. So instead of uh, doing this, you would mainly need to uh, tune all the other um, scripts and all do, do, do other things. But the point is that if you know um, what you, what, how your hypervisor works, if you know how to, uh, how to deploy a deployment file, how to cancel, how to do all those things, it's just a matter of following like, a few steps and then you have support for any hypervisor. Therefore, it is extremely integratable. I'm going to talk about the storage uh, subsystem. Storage subsystem, we have a uh, distribution we have support for shared file systems, of course. NFS, cluster, whatever you want. We have support for LDN and for iSCSI. To be honest, th those two, uh, they work very good. And they work very good because uh, we have many contributions from people, lots of people <coughs> using that, those ones. And, they, and uh, we've included all those patches they sent us. And right now, they, they work beautifully. We have support for SSH and for HTTP, so you can have an image in, in a web server and you can simply pass it along in the template of the written machine and it will just, it will just work. We also had some community contributions. Uh, we, we have, uh, we had a, those are not included in the official distribution, but they were at some point by people who are not there maintaining them anymore. But, yeah, but it's really easy because it's really easy to hack a new uh, support for a new storage backend. So, this is a bit tricky. In the panel, so we have a separate set of drivers. Uh, we have divided the, uh, the image storage and the drivers into two, two logical uh, sets. The data store drivers and the transfer manager drivers. The data store drivers are the one that take care of putting the file in the equivalent to an object store. So you want to use an image with an open image data, you have to register the, the image, and it will go to an object store or a file system or whatever it is. <coughs> Those are the scripts on the left. CP, it's for registering, copying. A stat will return the size, and make, and make a file system will create a new, uh, new empty one, clone, remove, and those things. And the transfer manager will uh, take care of the part of moving the images from the um, object store to the virtual machine directory, which will be executed by the, 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 the hypervisor. 
So um, I've chosen this example of the redistribution script of the um, volume to the iSCSI backend. The iSCSI backend in OpenLibda, we are assuming people have, uh, have it installed in a Linux box with TTT. So what it does, there's a few lines missing, but again, they're not very really relevant lines. We are sticking up information, having um, um, variable names and, and doing all the stuff. So uh, what it does, OpenLibda sends to the it calls the iSCSI CV script locally to the front end. This time it's not done in the SSH. And the scenario event, not by standard, aid, but it's sending the template in base 64. So this script, uh, what it does, and some like to buff it, will decrypt that, uh, the, the encode that, decode that uh, base 64 in the template, will extract a few uh, var uh, variables that depend on the user uh, uh, input, depending on how you create the template. And what it will do is as simple as uh, SSH in this script, what it will do is SSH into the host, the destination host, the one that has the ISCASI backend. It will create uh, a new LD, it will set up the LAN, and it will dump the configuration so in, in case the, the, the server reboots, uh, it won't be lost. Now, the, there's the SSH, SSH exec on the line, it will run the, the command. And then the last line is it's dumping the, the, the contents of the image file. To the, um, to, the, to, the, to the destination uh, to the destination's block device. So we do that with DD, so pretty straightforward, Unity tools, anything you want to do, as long as you know how it should work, how, how to get from A to B, what to, how to register it in ISCAP, so you can to make that within an open um, script. Now, this working works in a very similar way. We have uh, VLAN tagging, uh, we have open district support, we have uh, for uh, EV tables, those three are for isolation mainly. Um, we have, we have uh, flat networking scheme and uh, uh, support for, uh, for firewalling. Um, the structure of these um, networking, network drivers is only three scripts per uh, network driver. So if you have VLAN, for instance, that means you have to implement pre, post, and key. Pre is run right before the image start, the virtual machine starts. Post is run right, right after the virtual machine starts. And key is done to clean up all the, when you cancel the, the VM. So this is an example of the pre script that's run right before the, 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 um, right before the image is deployed. Uh, with a uh, with a VLAN tagging, regular VLAN tagging. So again, same, same, it's the same flow as always. The core sends a template via parameter <coughs> to to a script that it's uh, remotely in the host, and it ex it executes this uh, script. This script will do will create the bridge, uh, tag the, a physical device, and plug it into the bridge. So when the machine boots up, it will uh, find a, a bridge that is already configured and working. And by simply plugging the virtual network interface into that bridge, uh, you will have uh, VLAN tagging. Um, this script are uh, written in, in, in Ruby. Uh, not because they can be written in, 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 uh, in Bash, but but because, um, there were some inheritance things we wanted to do, so uh, there are many stuff in common, and we figured that by inheriting classes it would be much easier. But this is the whole. Uh, this is the this is the whole heart of the matter. You have uh, you can grab the VLAN from the configuration file from the instance from the virtual machine template. Uh, you create the bridge. You create you uh, create the uh, you create you uh, you create the the. Tag physical interface and you adapt it. Each of these uh, Ruby lines uh, traduces itself to a, a regular uh, Unix code like uh, vconfig or ifab or ip or whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to skip the authentication thing because uh, I don't know uh, I don't have much time left. But um, we have uh, for authentication, it's also very extensible. We, can, we have integration for LDAP Active Directory, we have uh, ASIC uh, Keeper authentication, we have support, support for ACL quotas. All this is extremely extensible. <laughs> you can hash a, a, a new uh, contribution, a new um, uh, authentication driver really easy. 
now I want to show you a quick example of uh, how the how the um, open level and Ruby bindings work. This this is a whole script that uh, it connects to the open level and iterates through all the virtual machines that you should can see and shuts them down. First line you require to level. Then we have in the eighth line to define the client. Uh, the next line uh, uh, gets the pool, and then in that for loop you just simply iterate through each uh, virtual machine and send it the um, shutdown method. And there you go. That's uh, that's Ruby API. Super simple and uh, it's really easy to to do many things with it. Also, as an example of uh, how to integrate, uh, how integration can be done on top of the nebula, uh, extending uh, using OCA uh, OCA code. Um, uh, a few days ago, we released three more applications that sits, uh, sit on top of the nebula. A flow will map services, so uh, you simply you can define a service like in the JSON. You have uh, two nodes, a uh, front end and a DB and a database. You launch them and it will uh, manage all those things. So you have a complete service management. Do rollbacks and do whatever you want. Upstage, which is a, uh, you have a, like dynamic templates with Chef installed. So if you want to um, uh, configure, so if you have like a, a an image that supports the Chef, Chef, you can install the WordPress dynamically by uh, supplying a, a configuration file. That's pretty good. And they have market that you host your marketplace. The marketplace is a it's a, a, a web interface. To really, where you can register uh, enable appliances and load them directly to uh, Penembla. So, uh, if you if you like Penembla and you want to contribute there, I uh, many many ways you can do that. Um, of course, uh, using Penembla is the most important one. Giving us feedback, we love that. Our app mailing list is reactive. There are many many interesting discussions going, going on there. Many people who are deploying Penembla using. Uh, um, really big data centers and they're uh, contributing ideas about how to, how to deploy those things, how to make it better, and all those things. You can of course report facts, uh, request features. You can translate the vanilla. The vanilla has been translated to the community by the community into 17 languages. You can make components, you can do whatever you want. Uh, my favorite one, if you're a package maintainer, please come talk with us. We need uh, package maintainers. Um, you can find us in the in the free node, uh, in free node, in the free node channel. Now, uh, this is uh, what you need to, need to do to download OpenEvola and try it, because uh, you go there and you can download four appli three appliances or go to the Amazon one and, and, and use it. Uh, and, and use it and will be already ready and running TTY Linux inside of it. Uh, and I'm just promoting a few more talks we're going to do in a while. Uh, next talk is also about OpenEvola by Sushan, so please stay. And then, um, uh, we have a 12 o'clock one about CentOS and Open Nebula, why that's a very good uh, um, a combination. And Raiders is a service that it's not exclusive to Open Nebula, but any cloud manager will want to use it because it's that you, uh, you send an image, you send a kickstart file, and it will give you back in, in a couple of minutes an image where you can download that, uh, an HTTP path where you can load that image from. So thank you very much, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to. Uh,